Okay, now that you've all struggled through using levels to clean up artwork, I'm going to show you another way to do it. This is my preferred method. It's not the only method, just like the levels weren't the only method, and my method may not necessarily be the best. Um, but uh, it is a method that I've been using for a long time. Uh, it was a method that uh, uses curves as opposed to levels. Um, I learned this method from David Bidney, who used to work for uh, uh, Industrial Light and Magic. Uh, some of the films he worked on were Terminator 2, Spawn. He actually created the uh, method that they used to make Spawn's cape. Um, and he is an absolutely tremendous, um, he's, a, he's a tremendous uh, uh, Photoshop artist. And he's really, really knowledgeable on it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, I have my image. I'm going to duplicate the image. Now I'm working on a copy of the image, so I don't have to worry about screwing it up and then, oh my God, what do I do now? That was my only copy. No. Always duplicate your image in Photoshop. Uh, you can save it if you want. So we're going to save this as assignment one copy. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blow this up. I'm going to look at where the trouble spots are. Um, the first thing I notice is the back of the boy's head here. It's not a pure black. Uh, neither is the shadow there. Or the shadow up here. We have a lot of artifacts or you know pencil lines still visible. We have a lot of trouble spots with the lettering, the guidelines, the original pencil lettering is still visible. I'm not a big fan of this lettering. It looks like somebody did it with uh, a ballpoint pen, which is not the way to go. Um, yep, we still have guidelines visible on the artboard. A lot of pencil smudging. Now, this, this is interesting here. I don't know if he just forgot to ink the panel line or if it was intended to uh, be a bleed off like that. You can see the other side. No, the other side is a bleed off. Okay. All right. Again, we have uneven blacks. Okay, now the spots where I've uh, noticed people were having a lot of trouble with, and uh, the first time I played with this file, I also had the same trouble, was um, in the father's mustache in panel one. These little lines here for his mustache, they seem to disappear a lot. Um, this line just gets really, really weak, almost like uh, the pen was running out of ink, or I'm not sure what could have caused that. I don't know if it was intentional that only the first half of the line be inked, but that's what we have. Uh, I'm going to assume that the line is supposed to go all the way down, just as I'm going to assume that the other line is supposed to go right to here. So what I'm going to do now is open Image, Adjustment, Curves. Now, Photoshop defaults to this being chosen. I don't want you to use that. I want you to click on the Pencil tool. Uh, what this does, as you can see, it'll give us really curved lines, which is really great for making adjustments in grayscale. But what we want to do is take this grayscale and get it as close to pure black and white as we possibly can. So we're going to use the pencil tool. Now what we're going to do first off is we're going to clamp down some of these blacks. Oh, you'll notice that uh, there's a grid here in the, in the, in the uh, histogram chart. There's a grid. This is all percentages of 10% 10 uh, 10 of black. So this is 0% black, 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then the other line is 100. So as you can see here, there's no 
nowhere in this artwork is there actually 100% black. Uh, that's really not unusual. In the ink, you know, when you spread it, it just tends to wash out a little bit, become a bit transparent. So we're gonna we're gonna clamp that down a little bit. Um, you'll notice when my cursor is not directly on the line, it becomes an arrow. When it is in the chart, it becomes a pencil. So start at the upper right hand corner and we're gonna push it this way a little bit. Now what we've just done is we've just turned everything that was 80% to 99% black into 100% black. And we still got some trouble areas up here. And it looks like we go about another 3% and we got it licked. So let's do that. Yeah, let's take it right up to 70%. Okay, that looks good for the time being. Well, our mustache is still looking pretty good. Let's see what percentage is here. Boy, that's going to be tough. We are going to lose some of that. It's inevitable. So what we want to do is we want to minimize the loss. So I'm going to push these blacks. I'm going to clamp. This is called clamping down uh, values. So I'm going to clamp down these grays even further. See if I can tighten up that mustache. All right. I've just brought it. All right now, everything that was 50, 50 to 99% black is now 100% black. We're going to have trouble with this ear here, I can tell. We're still going to continue to have trouble with the mustache line. Um, these are areas that we really don't want to touch right yet. Um, let me pull this out a little bit, take another look. Now you'll notice that it didn't really darken up any of the pencil lines here uh, that we have concerns about because those are all lighter than 50%. This is one of the worst here, this pixel. And that looks like it's about what, 10, 20, 38, 39%. Let's see what this one is. That one's about 43%. So we're, we're in a touchy area in here when we balance that off against uh, the artwork over here. But when we look at the rest of it, all those blacks look pretty strong. Well, we got a little smudge here. What's that going to register at? Okay. Well, let's take a closer look. Yeah, we're going to have to pull that stuff out with an eraser tool later on. Or a brush, whatever you prefer. But the lettering seems to have held up good. And I'm sorry if I'm making you dizzy with this scrolling around here, but that's really the only way to examine it, is to blow it up and, and, and uh, just move it around. Okay. Now, I'm going to start getting rid of some of these uh, pencil lines. So we're going to go to the opposite end now. We're going to go to the 0% black. And I just clamped down everything that was 0 to 10% black. You can see that some of those gray lines are beginning to disappear. I'm going to pull that up to about 25%. Now, the lettering down here is starting to weaken a little bit, so I don't want to push it yet. Um, see how the thing looks overall. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to say OK. So that's stage one of the process. And you can see, I, di I haven't timed this, but uh, I don't think it's taken too long here. Uh, a lot less time than a lot of you spent on it. Um, and this is why I like using curves instead of levels. It's just so much easier to work with. Now, we do have some problem areas here. And we have some problem areas here. Oh, I want to take a look at that ear. Okay, the ear is still looking pretty good. All right, so here's what I want to do now. I'm going to take my lasso tool. I'm just going to circle it around this problem area here. Whoops, I don't want to take that spot of the mustache, so I'm going to remove that. Now I'm going to go back to my curves. You can see how much the histogram has changed now. Well, actually, let me cancel that out, get rid of that, go back to curves. And you can see how much the histogram has changed. Now you can see this straight white black line here, or this straight white line here, where there wasn't anything before. Now there's a lot of pure black. Um, let me see what's the percentage there. What's that percentage? Yeah, I think we can probably take care of some of those areas right now. So now I'm going to just take this ear and I'm going to go back to uh, curves. And then I'm going to clamp down that line. The only area that's going to get affected is the selected area. Maybe I should back that off a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Get rid of that uh, guideline there. And this time, instead of clamping down the blacks, I'm going to clamp down the lower percentage to make them white. And that's clean. Now at this point, everything is looking pretty good. Looks pretty clean to me. Um, but what I want to do is now I want to reinforce what I've done. This is just, I'm going to see if this works. Uh, it might work, it might not work. But there's only, way to one only one way to find out, and that's to try it. So now I'm going to go to Image Calculations. Now what Calculations does is it takes your channels, whatever channels you choose, if you're working CMYK, it'll if you do this drop down menu here it'll show you CMYK same thing if you're working RGB it'll show you RGB for one channel and then uh, for the first source and then for the second source it'll do the same thing since we only have one channel it's only given us one choice what I want to do now is I want to use overlay what overlay does is uh, any value that is 51% or higher of black it'll turn it to pure black anything that is 49 percent or lower it will turn to pure white so sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't we can always undo it if it doesn't so there let's see how those problem areas look now let's see how our mustache looks Mustache looks good. 
lettering didn't break up actually got made a little stronger we still have some problems around the lettering with the pencil line showing through but you know that's a pretty easy fix at this point yeah this here all these are going to be real easy fixes because now we're going to go back to curves we're going to sample some of those spots <laughs> Lucky me, I happened to pick a spot that was pure black. That we'll have to go into with a brush later on. But let's take a look at these. All right. Going to try clamping this stuff down. Pull back. look at that R there. No, that's still good. All right. Let's take a look at that. All right, everything that was 30% black or lower, we just turned it into 0% black. And I want to accept that. I think it looks pretty good. Okay. So now if you look over at your channels, now we have an extra channel here. We have gray and we have alpha one. Um, this is what the gray channel looks like. And this is what the alpha channel looks like. We're going to take the, uh, the uh, gray channel and we're going to trash it. Now we can rename that alpha channel gray. And we're done. Now the next step is to turn it into bitmap. But we can save that step if you want. And here's how. We're gonna go back to channels, or back to curves rather. And we're gonna take this, and we're gonna draw this right up to about 60%, 70%. And we're gonna take this, and do the same. Now, there should be absolutely no gray tones in there whatsoever. Not a speck of gray anywhere. What we've done is we've clamped down the values to either 100% black or 100% white. We just saved the hassle of going through and converting to a bitmap. And now we're ready to move on to the next stage. So you can take this, play with it a little bit. Um, like I say, that's my preferred method of working. Uh, I've been using this method for probably about 18 years and uh, works great for me. And um, I got to give kudos to, uh, to Biden for coming up with this process. Uh, and by the way, if you can find one of his books, I highly recommend him. Uh, David had uh, worked with Photoshop before it was actually called Photoshop. He was actually friends with the two brothers who developed it. Um, he was the one that came up with the idea for the pinch filter. And so if anybody's gonna know the ins and the outs of Photoshop, he's the man to go to. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks a lot, you guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend if you happen to be watching this on Sunday. And uh, we'll move onward and upward.